Hello, I wanted to talk about um, finding your purpose and I'm walking in it today. I wanted to start on that. Um, and I wanted to refer to a dream that God gave me um, last night. Or actually, well, yeah, that I woke up from actually not last night, but it was early this morning. That kind of relates to this. Um, it ties in with what I was teaching about, so I wanted to share the dream because it, it, it's important and it helps also for us to find God's purpose and, and to know God's purpose, you know, and to discern God's purpose, you know, from what people are telling us and what, you know, in the direction that we want to go in. It helps us to discern the difference and discern where to go, you know, what direction to go in because we can't follow after people and we can't follow after our own feelings, our own desires and wants. We have to make sure it's God, not good, but we have to make sure it's God because good is not always God. Just because something looks good doesn't mean it's where God's leading us. And a lot of times people think that, you know, they, they, they think because it's good that it's where God's leading them and it's not, you know, we have to be careful of that and we have to be mindful of it because, you know, everything that looks good is not always where God's leading us to go. It, you know, we can get misled, you know, by other people. And doing the wrong things and not going in the right direction where we're supposed to go in or where God wants us to go in. And I wanted to share the dream because it's so, it, it was so, I mean, it was like on point. I mean, God was just like really, <laughs> I mean, confirming to me had just how much, I mean, I know, I know it's important, but he was just really showing me, I believe that, that the importance of the decisions that we make and how important they are, you know, that they're not just something that we should take lightly and they're not something that we should, you know, make without praying about first. We should always pray about it and always seek him before we make any kind of decisions, you know, and it's so important. And God, you know, he was really showing me that in that dream that I had, it was really, it was just so on point. And I'm like, wow. I said, thank you, Jesus, because he is really pouring his spirit out in his people. You know, like the Bible says in the last days in Acts 2, that he's going to pour spirit upon people, upon his sons and upon his daughters. Praise God, and they'll prophesy, and, and, you know, he'll show signs and wonders in heaven, which he's already doing. So we know we're living in the last days. I mean, that's proof of it right there with the stuff, that the craziness that's going on in this world these days. But I wanted to share this dream because it's so, it was just like, you know, it was just so, it was really good, but I was with my friend, excuse me, and we were in this place, I don't know where it was, we were somewhere, I think, I don't know, some big building somewhere, I don't know where it was, but we were with a whole bunch, I mean, a whole bunch of people, I mean, there was crowds and crowds of people there, I mean, a bunch of them, I don't know who they were, it was just a really, a whole lot of people, and, um, they wanted me to do something, they were trying to get me to make this decision on, um, moving to another state. I can't remember what state it was. I was trying to remember. I was like, God, bring it back to my remembrance. But I know he'll, he'll bring it, the rest of it back to me. It was just so in detail. It was so in depth. And I'm like, wow, God, this is this is a power pack dream <laughs> for sure. But we were in this place and they were trying to get me to make this decision on where to go and where I should move to, what state I should move to. And they wanted me to move to a certain state. And I'm um, I wasn't too sure about that. I'm like, I don't know. I said, I need to, you know, really pray about this first, you know, and not just jump into doing something just because it's something that I may want to do. So I was consulting my friend about it and we were both, you know, talking about it and discussing it and kind of, you know, making sure that it was the right thing to do, if it was the right thing to do or not. And in the end, we decided it wasn't something that God wanted me to do. So I told him, no, I said, I'm not going to do this. And they were trying to get me to compromise God's word, which is so true these days that people try to get you to do that. And the enemy sends them there to, to, to do that for that purpose, to try to get you to compromise God's word and to go against what he says so that you will make the wrong decisions. And we don't want that. But we decided that it was something that God didn't want me to do so I decided against it and they kept telling me to compromise oh compromise compromise you know don't don't listen to what God is telling you just go this way and do what you want to do and you know I was like no I said I'm not compromising God's word no matter what I said I'm standing firm on what he says I'm not going in the direction that he's not leading me to go in and um 
you know, me and my friend decided that we, we kind of waited out and, and figured this is not of God. This is not where God wants me to go. But it was some decision that they wanted me to make. And it's just so important. It ties in with what I'm teaching on now about finding our purpose. Because a lot of times that's what the enemy will do. He will throw people in our paths and, you know, to try to distract us and to try to get us off of God's path and to get us to go in the wrong direction. And just because it looks good to us and we think it's good, you know, we go and we act on it without praying about it and without seeking God first. And we can't do that. You know, and that dream was just really showing the importance of that. And, you know, the importance of how we need to really, you know, pray about things before we do them. We can't just act on something just because it seems good. Don't mean it's God. <laughs> so we have to really be careful and we have to really... um you know, use our discernment and, and really seek God on it first before we go making decisions, I mean, any kind of decisions, because even though they may seem small to us, to God, they're not small. <laughs> Nothing is small to God. I mean, it's all, he's, he's, um, he is wanting to be involved in every aspect of our lives, and he's wanting us to get him involved in every aspect of our lives, not just part of it. You know, he wants us to get him in every area of our life so that we can make the right decisions and the right choices for ourselves because otherwise we won't we'll end up making the wrong decisions and we don't want that. We have to make sure we stay on the path that God puts before us because it's important. You know, we can't just go on how we feel and how we act and how we want to go. But I did want to share that dream because it ties in. I mean, it was just so, I mean, it was just like a wow. It, it really showed the importance of it. It really did. And I believe it's for something coming up too. I believe it's for coming up decisions, just this showing that we really need to, to take time and pray, you know, and seek God about the decisions that we make. And I will start here in 1 Peter 2, 9. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Praise the Lord. But yeah, he's called us out of out of the darkness and his wonderful light, his marvelous light, wonderful light. Praise the Lord. We're his chosen people, his royal priesthood. You know, we're his possession. We belong to him. We belong to God. So we have to really put him in every aspect of our lives, not just some like I was saying. It says Acts 2.23, this man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and for knowledge and you with the help of the wicked man, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. And that's about what Jesus did, you know, about him being handed over. He he took our sins upon himself. He took the punishment that we deserved, you know, just so that we could be saved through him. And they nailed him to the cross for that, you know, for what we did, not for what he did, because he's perfect. So that just shows God's love for us and how much he loves us, because that's what he did. <laughs> you know, he handed himself over to, to be crucified on the cross for our sins for our sake it wasn't for anything else it was out of love for us in acts thirteen thirty six. now when david had served god's purpose in his own generation he fell asleep and he was buried with his accusers and his body decayed praise the lord but he served God's purpose in his life. David, that's talking about David. He served his purpose with God. He served his purpose in his own generation. He did what God wanted him to do before he died. You know, he fulfilled his purpose. His body may have decayed, which our body does when we pass, when we die. Our body decays, but we, our spirits go to live with Jesus if we're born again. Which hopefully we are, because I don't want to see anybody, you know, miss God and, and go to hell. That's awful, <laughs> but people sadly do that every day, and it's just, uh, it's sad, but, you know, they choose it for themselves, and it's terrible, and Colossians 1, 16, for him who all things were created, things in heaven and things on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers, authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. And that's saying that everything on this earth, including us, has been created for God's purpose. You know, we've been created for him, by him, to fulfill his purpose for our life, just as it was with David in that other scripture I read. He fulfilled God's purpose, and that's what we want to do. We want to fulfill 
God's full purpose for our life and live our full potential out. You know, live live to, to our fullest, you know, live life to its fullest through, you know, with, with doing what God wants us to do, not just doing what we want to do, because really it's, our life is not our own. You know, we're, we were bought with the blood of Jesus, so we have to, you know, we were bought to, bought by him, by his blood to fulfill his purpose for our life. We belong to him, praise the Lord. We are his chosen one, his chosen generation. That he's called for this time to do the things that he's called us to do, praise God. And he's moving us into that time. He is moving us into that time. Ecclesiastics uh, 3.1. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. That's the saying there's a time for everything. God's, God's perfect time. He works things out in his perfect time. You know, not the time that we think that it should be done, but in his time. Because his time is perfect. And this is another scripture I like too. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. And that's what God's plans for us are. To, to give us a hope and a future. Not to harm us. and Not to, you know, not to do anything bad to us. But to, to prosper us. And to... You know, have us fulfill his purpose for our life, which is an awesome purpose. Praise the Lord. We don't want nothing less than God's best, and we can't settle for less than God's best. And the enemy will try to get you to settle for less than God's best, because he will throw people in your path to try to get you to do that. And we can't fall for that. That's why we need a sharper and deeper discernment for this time that we're in now, especially because, you know, the enemy is really pouring it on thick, <laughs> trying to get us to go in every which direction and not... You know, think about what we're the decisions that we're making, not go to God, and we can't do that. We can't afford to do that. We need to look to God and really seek Him and seek His purpose for our lives. And Jeremiah thirty two nineteen, great are great are your purposes and mighty are your deeds. Your eyes are open to the ways of all mankind. You reward each you reward each person according to their conduct and their needs deserve. Which is true. God rewards us according to our conduct. And what we deserve. Which is what he wants us to have. Not just what we naturally would deserve without him. But what we deserve with him. <laughs> because people will take that into one just to the other too. And they'll think, oh, God's giving me what I deserve. That's why I'm suffering so much. That's why I'm going through all this mess. No, that's not why you're going through that mess. You're going through that mess because it's training. God's preparing you. And when we go through, you know, those tr those tough trials and those tough tribulations, is God training us, and that's what He's doing. We're in a time of training where He's training us and He's teaching us how to deal with the things that are to come. So, you know, we have to go through some things to to be able to face what's coming ahead of us, and that's why He's putting us through this. That's why we're going through this. It's not that that He's wanting to be mean to us or or you know punish us for anything. God don't do that. He punished Jesus for what we deserved. <laughs> Jesus took our punishment. We don't have to take our punishment. Because our punishment was laid upon him on the cross. So we don't take that punishment. That punishment is what he took. The only punishment that people take is when they, you know, decide to rebel against God and go against what he wants them to do. And then they end up suffering because, you know, things that God never intended them to because they keep going against what he wants them to do. And they don't pay no mind to what he wants them to do. And that's why they suffer a lot of the things that they're suffering now because they're not going in the way that he wants them to go. And it's sad because every day I'm seeing them fall left and right. And I'm like, Jesus, what in the world? These people are just, <laughs> it is it's crazy, but it, it's a falling away. That's what God told me. He said they're falling away. He says they are falling away. I said, yeah, they are, Lord. Sadly, they are falling away. And in Job 42, too, I know that you can do all things that you can do all things no purpose of yours can be thawed and no purpose of his can be altered or changed or or um you know not fulfilled in our lives unless we decide that <laughs> you know otherwise god's purpose will be fulfilled in our lives as long as we're following after him and as long as we got our hearts set on him Nothing's going to derail us from his plan. If, as long as we don't allow it to, is more or less is what this is saying. As long as we don't allow it, allow it, then there's no way that anything will get us off of God's path. As long as we have a heart for him 
as long as we're seeking after him with our whole hearts and we're doing what he wants us to do, then nothing else will be able to shake us and move us from his purpose for our life. But that's a choice that we have to make. We have to decide that. We have to make that decision and decide that we're not going to be shaken by things around us and by the way our circumstances look. But we're only going to be moved by the word of God and what he says. We're not going to be moved by anything else. We're going to only allow his word to move us and nothing else. We can't allow anything else to move us but his word. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. But that is just really, I mean, it's just something that God's really put on my heart to, to share. And when he showed me that dream, I was like, man, this is so true, Lord. <laughs> this is like on point. <laughs> it's like saying, yes, you need it. <laughs> It's stronger and deeper discernment for sure. And we do. We need a stronger and deeper discernment because I'm telling you, with these times we're living in now, you know, decisions can look good, you know, but they're not always God. Like I said, we have to make sure and we have to seek God on it because if you're not seeking God on it, then you're going to end up making a wrong decision without, you know, without it, it being Him. So we can't do that. We have to make sure that it's God. We can't. Just go based on how we feel and the things that we want to do. We have to go based on what God says and based on his word because it's so important that we do that. It's so important that we do that. Because if not, we will end up going in the wrong direction and getting off God's path. I'm writing down where I stopped that on my notes that I printed up yesterday so I'll know where I stopped that, but... It's, well, set that up there so it won't fall down. Praise the Lord. But I hope that this helped you um, and gave you some insight. I'll go over these scriptures again just in case you may want to go over them in your time with God, which I would encourage you to do because, it, you know, the more time we spend with God and the more we're into His Word the more in tune we are to what he's saying to us, you know. And that's another thing that's why it's so important because, you know, being in tune to hearing God and keeping ourselves and keeping our eyes and our ears open to him and open to what, you know, to where he's leading us has everything to do with how long we stay in his word and how we keep his word before us, you know. Not that you have to do it all day long, you know, not that you don't have to do your you know, things that you got to do. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying in your time with him, whatever it be in the morning or at night or whatever, your time is with him that you have to take that time aside. You have to take that time to get into his word and to keep yourself disciplined in his word. Because if we don't, then, you know, a lot of times that's how, you know, that's how we get, we build our, um, not only build our relationship with God, but, you know, make it stronger and deeper, but we also, it also helps our hearing. It also helps our, us to be more in tune to what he's saying because we're in his word. And a lot of times, you know, even when you're reading his word, God will speak to you anytime, really. I'm not saying he only does it when you're in his word, but a lot of times God shares things with his people when they're in his word. You know, he'll tell you certain things or he'll open up certain things to you in certain scriptures. He'll, he'll help you see it in a different way that you didn't see it before. He'll open it up to you in a new way. And it just helps you to deepen your relationship with him. And that's why it's so important. Another reason why it's so important that we stay in his word, because it helps to sharpen our hearing, not just, you know, good to, it's not just good just to read it, but we need to study it and we need to get into it and write the, the scriptures out longhand and, and really, Study his word and look at the meanings of words and, you know, get in the concordance and get a dictionary and, and just really dig deep into his word. Because I'm telling you, the more we do that, the more in tune to his voice will be, you know, the more sharpened your, your hearing will be and your, you know, discernment will also be. It also helps your discernment to get sharper and deeper also. The more that we stay in God's word and study his word, it helps a lot with that also. Because he opens up things to us, like I was saying. He, he opens up different things that we may not have seen. You know, he'll open up his word in a different way and show us different things through a certain scripture that we didn't see before. And he's so awesome when he does that. You know, it's like you read the scripture a thousand times, but then one day you read it and all of a sudden God opens up something different to you. And then you're like, wow, I never saw that in that scripture before. And it's just amazing how he does that. And the more time we spend with him and in his word, he does that. That's what he wants to do. 
because it helps us and it gives us more revelation on things and more knowledge and more wisdom. And that's what we need, especially in these days. And that's the main reason why it's so important that we stay in his word. You know, among other reasons, there's a million reasons why we should, but I mean, that's that's the main reason, so that we can keep ourselves in tune to him and keep our discernment sharper and deeper and keep our knowledge of, and wisdom of him deeper and stronger and, and just allowing him to move us into deeper and, and stronger levels and higher levels is where he's wanting to take us. But we have to follow after him in order for that to happen. Praise God. But I'll read the scriptures back to you real quick. The ones that I went over. See, 1 Peter 2, 9. Uh, Acts 2.23, Acts 13.36. Colossians 1.16. Ecclesiastes 3.1. Jeremiah 29.11. Jeremiah 32.19. Oh, I didn't read Job. I did not read Job. Yeah, I did. And Job, I think. Oh, no, I didn't. Yeah, I did. And Job 42, too. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I read that one. I was like, wait a minute. Did I read that one? Yeah, I did. Okay. Those are the ones that I went over today. And I'll go over my other ones tomorrow. I got it marked on my notes, so I won't forget where I stopped at. Praise God. But I pray that this did help you. It gives you some understanding and, and knowledge and helps you to realize how important it is that we keep ourselves in tune to God because... You know, a lot of things he has shown us through dreams lately. Like he's shown us our purpose. He's shown us where we should go. He's shown us decisions we should make. He's shown us a lot of things through our dreams. And I, I know I've shared that before, but he's really opening up a lot of that now. He is really, like, amping it up because he's wanting us to, to be more prepared for what he's got ahead for us. And he's really amping up the things that he shows us in dreams that I've noticed that with mine. They're getting more amped up. He's showing me more things that give me more revelation on things so that I'll be prepared for what he's doing for me in my next season. But praise God. <laughs> I tell you, it's it's just really, I can't stress it enough. I know I say it and I don't want to sound like a broken record saying it, but <laughs> I just want to make sure that people understand, you know, that, that the importance of it. You know, I just want it to get through and sink in because we really need to dig deep into his word. I mean, deeper than we ever had before. And especially in this time with all this chaos and stuff going on, I'm telling you, it, it is very vital because, you know, we don't want to make wrong decisions. We want to make the decisions that God's leading us to make. You know, we want to go in the direction that he's leading us to go, not go where because, you know, not go in a direction that we want to go just because that's what we want to do. You know, we have to make sure it's God. And that's where he's leading us. You know, to go, and it's just like with my friend, too. She was saying that just yesterday, that she's wanting to switch positions in her job, but, you know, she's waiting to make sure that if that's where God's leading her or not. You know, she's just taking little steps at a time just to make sure, you know, she's not making a, a rash decision. She's waiting on him to, to guide her in the right way, and that's what we need to do. We need to wait on God to guide us in the right way to go because, you know, we don't want to make decisions that are, that are not of God and not where he's leading us. And that's why she said, she said, no, I'm waiting on this. I'm waiting. I'm seeking God and praying about it and making sure that this is where he's leading me. And I said, exactly. You have to because, you know, we don't want something that looks good. And that's what she was saying. She said, I want to go based on my feelings and based on something that looks good because good ain't always God. I said, no, it's not. That's the truth. It's not. Good is not always God. So we have to make sure that what we're doing is God, not good. <laughs> Because good is not always the Lord, praise God. But I had prayed that this uh, teaching was a blessing to you. And I will um, continue on it tomorrow, of course. Because it's it's so much, I mean, there's there's so many different levels. And I know God's showing me so many different things to share with this. And I'm going to get to all of them because I've got notes. I'm keeping notes and I'm writing everything down that he's showing me so that I can share everything that he's opening up to me and showing me about this because this is going to, I believe this is a really um, important thing that he wants me to share. I'm going to share as much of it as I can and get in depth, as much in depth of it in it as I can because it's, it's important to God and hey, what's important to him is important to me. <laughs> He's wanting his people to know this because sadly, like I said, you know, a lot of them are falling and he doesn't want that to happen to us. He wants us to stay on the right path and be on the right path and follow after him. 
And that's what we have to do. We have to make sure it's God. I'm telling you, and it gets tricky sometimes. I'm telling you, it really does. Sometimes it can get tricky <laughs> with the decisions that you have to make, but you just have to make sure that, you know, you're seeking God's space and you're seeking after what he wants for you and you're seeking his purpose and his will for your life so that you can fulfill what he wants you to. And you can fulfill and you will fulfill his, purpur his purpose for your life. Praise the Lord, but we're just going to make sure that we use our discernment and we stay on the right path and we'll be okay. But I pray that this is a blessing to you and helps you and you can go over those scriptures and I encourage you too so that you can, you know, deepen your your relationship with God and deepen your, your intimacy with him because that's what he wants us to do and that's what we need to do, especially in the time we're in now. We need to deepen our relationship with him about as deep as we can get, <laughs> as deep into God as we can get, we need to get. Praise the Lord, we really do. Cause I'm telling you, there's... The way things are in this chaotic in this world is just, oh my gosh, it is insane. Insane. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But, uh, Jesus, it's just something that's really been strong on me. And I just, I'm like, man, it just, when God gave me that dream and opened all that stuff up to me, I'm like, wow, Lord, this is just confirmation that I really need to share this dream and share, you know, go more in depth with this as much as in depth of it as I can so that. People can have an understanding of it. And I pray it did give you an understanding of it. But until tomorrow, I guess I will see y'all then. And I thank you for watching. Praise God. And I pray that you have a blessed day. And I will see you tomorrow for part two. Bye-bye. <laughs>